So Zavala is interviewing Father Gabriel Amor, and he says, did Padre Pio say anything else to you about future c catastrophes, earthquakes, floods, wars, epidemics, hunger? Did he allude to the same plagues prophesied in the Holy Scriptures? So this shows that the interviewer wants to know, does the third secret have to do with plagues and, you know, disasters, earthquakes, floods? Listen carefully to what Father Gabriel Amor says. Quote, Nothing of the sort mattered to him, Padre Pio. Nothing of the sort mattered to him, however terrifying they proved to be, except for the great apostasy within the church. He says, it is Satan who has been introduced into the bosom of the church and within a very short time will come to rule a false church. Two parts here. Part one, Satan has been introduced into the bosom of the church. What year is this being stated? Father Gabriel Morse, not sure, but he says I was a new priest. Um, so it was about 1960 in which Padre Pio told me this. So in 1960, Padre Pio is either lying or he's, or he's wrong or he's crazy or he's right. I think he's right. Second part of the quote from Padre Pio. Quote, Within a very short time, he, that is Satan, will come to rule a false church. So beginning around 1960, Padre Pio said, in a short time, there will be a false church with Satan ruling it. What was he talking about? Was he talking about Lutherans? No. Was he talking about Anglicans? No. Eastern Orthodox? Maybe. No. What was he talking about? He was talking about the same principle of iniquity that Archbishop Vigano talks about, which is called the counter church. So the interviewer, Zavala, says, oh my goodness, some kind of antichrist? When did he, Padre Pio, prophesy this to you? Father Gabriel Amor says, it must have been around 1960 since I was already a priest by then. Then he asks, was that why John the 23rd had such a panic about publishing the third secret of Fatima so that the people wouldn't think that he was the antipope or whatever it was? A slight but knowing smile curls on the lips of Father Amorth. The Mr. Zavala asks, quote, Did Padre Pio say anything else to you about future catastrophes, earthquakes, floods, wars, epidemics, hunger? Did he allude to the same plagues prophesied in the Holy Scriptures? And then Father Gabriel Moore says this, Nothing of the sort mattered to him, however terrifying they proved to be, except for the great apostasy within the church. Well, I think we Catholics recognize the profound sanctity of Padre Pio. He bore the stigmata. I've been to Italy. I've, I've been and seen his body. I've prayed there. Of course, I have a devotion to him, not a, a huge devotion, but I, I recognize him as a great saint. I've asked his intercession. If he, if he was saying that the third secret of Fatima had something to do with Satan, three things, Satan in the bosom of the church, a false church, and the great apostasy. I think we should pay attention. I think you should pay attention. And if you look around in 2021 and say, you know, the church is in bad shape. This is not the Catholicism of my grandparents, my great-grandparents. There's financial scandal. There's sex scandal. There's sodomy. There's molestation. There's heresy. There's constant fiddling with the rubrics and the liturgy. God is not the focus. Dogma is not the focus. Divine worship towards God is not the focus. The focus is social justice, being woke, 
aligning Catholic public works with liberal political ideologies? You know, we just saw the Vatican's inviting who to talk about health at the Vatican. Joe Perry from Aerosmith. Chelsea Clinton, the daughter of Hillary and Bill Clinton. Fauci. I mean, it's a clown world out there. And you can sit around and you can say, along with the USCCB and the talking heads, Catholicism is awesome. Or as Bishop Barron is saying, well, the problem with Vatican II is we never, we never really tried Vatican II. It was falsely implemented. If we could just get back to the, to the core of Vatican II, it'll be just amazing. And that's kind of like what you hear if you go to college and you take a class on political theory and the professor's a, a Marxist. And you say, well, how come every Marxist country always failed? They said, ah, because Marxism Pure Marxism has never been properly implemented. If we could just implement Marxism, it'd be it'd bring about a utopia. And that's what we hear. That if we could just go back to 1962 to 1965 and distill the pure, pure teaching of Vatican II and implement that, we would have the new springtime. We'd have the new Pentecost. Everything would be amazing. But I think ultimately what you have to ask yourself today is, is Padre Pio crazy? Is Padre Pio a crank? Is Padre Pio a conspiracy theorist? Did Padre Pio have it wrong when he kissed the ring of Archbishop Lefebvre? When he said, Satan has entered the bosom of the church. When Padre Pio said, there's a false church emerging. And when he said, we're entering the great apostasy. Ultimately, you need to say, I think if you, if you reject all this, you think it's just a conspiracy, infiltration, just a dumb book, just to sell copies, it doesn't fake conspiracy theory. Ultimately, you just have to say, Padre Pio was a crank. He was wrong. That's what you got to do. You don't have to say, well, I don't really like Vigano's tone or his nuances or, I don't know, Bishop Schneider seems sort of fanatical sometimes, whatever. Basically, it's kind of the liar, lunatic Lord situation, you know, from C.S. Lewis. Our Lord Jesus Christ was either a liar, he was deceiving everyone, he was a lunatic, crazy, or he truly was the Lord, second person of the Trinity, the Logos. Those are your three options, liar, lunatic Lord. Padre Pio, same way. When it comes to Satan being in the bosom of the church and the great apostasy and a counter church emerging, he's either lying to you, he's crazy, or he's dead on. And I think most of you in 2021, having lived through the summer of shame, McCarrick, and having, having lived through the debacle of churches shutting down and denying sacraments during COVID, and then also seeing the Pachamama idols erected in the Vatican. I think Padre Pio's right. I think Padre Pio nailed it. Because he was close to the Lord. He was closer to the Lord and Our Lady than you and I will ever be. Let's be honest. So, may Padre Pio pray for us. I don't think he was lying. I don't think Padre Pio was a lunatic. I think Padre Pio was dead on. Satan has infiltrated into the bosom of the church. Freemasonry has entered, invaded, he says, into the church. There's a false church competing. See, the false church is like a parasite feeding on the healthy body. What's the healthy body? The true church. The one true Catholic and apostolic church. There's this parasite Stealing nutrition, stealing people, stealing sacraments, stealing money, stealing victims to feed its lust, to feed its wicked desires. That's the counter church. Courage, 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 penance, penance.
penance.